Uh, my name is Father John Ensler, and my desire to become a priest came, I think, very early in my life. My parents were such faithful people. I'm a big family, I have 12 siblings. Faith was part of our life every single week. Went to church, of course, every Sunday, but often even during the week. So I was kind of intrigued by the wonder of the priests who I knew so well. I'd worked in the rectory for a while in the church. I grew up in a Lady of Lords, Bethesda. I saw wonderful things. And while I frankly didn't really want to do it in many ways, I didn't want to get overly involved in the religious aspects of, of, of life, I, I just couldn't shake the idea. So thought about it in grade school, very interested. High school, no, 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 no. College, it kept coming back to the point where I finally said, you know, I have to decide whether this is what God wants for me. So what in the seminar deciding or saying basically, is this what God wants? If it is, I'll do it. Let me find out in the seminary. So that was a big decision for me. Not to go into the I'm going to become a priest, but to say, we were to find out I'm supposed to be a priest. You know, I, I can't speak for other places, but I can speak for Washington, where I'm from, Washington, D.C. We now have 79 seminarians. 79 men are in formation to be priests. That, that's a huge number. That means we'll probably be ordaining for the next 10 years or so, seven, eight, nine people a year, which will basically allow us to do the ministry we do. Um, we do worry about as the as times change, we have more and more people who are aging out of the priesthood because of their age or, or because of illness. So we need those replacements, but we're well taken care of here. Now, I will tell you, it's not the story in other places. Our diocese has made a concerted effort to say vocations are key to us. So Cardinal McCarrick and then followed by Cardinal Whirl have both celebrated the belief that vocations are here, or are we asking? Are we inviting? Are we reflecting upon who might be a great priest? The sad thing is, back in the 60s and 70s, we lost so many religious brothers and sisters. I think it changed dramatically at the Vatican Council. It changed dramatically. So we lost those sisters and brothers. But it means now for a young woman who is 24, that's her convent, she's going to be the youngest woman at convent by 30 years. It's a much tougher thing. So unless we find a way to make sure we've got some communities where young women feel like they're part of a group or a community, they're not, if you will, the, the, the younger, younger, younger grandchild almost in the convent, we've got a shot. So I think that to some degree, um, the communities that like Mother Teresa's sisters have done very well, the teaching community, the Dominican sisters have done very well, but they're both attracting younger women who feel like they have other support in the community and I think through that vocations grow. Well, you know, before he arrived here, he talked about the immigrants in Europe coming from the Mideast, from Syria. And you see that picture, that little boy on, on the beach who was found deceased, three or four year old little boy. And you know, he, he encouraged us all to say, all parishes and all convents, all churches in Europe, please, please adopt an immigrant family. Please adopt a family. So that's his whole overall commitment. We, we help each other. We're brothers and sisters. In this country, I think the message is the same. The message is, are we... So, you know, think about it. We're here. We've been welcomed, maybe through our parents, grandparents, or great-grandparents. They were welcomed here, came over to the Statue of Liberty, wherever they, wherever they came, as Irish immigrants or German immigrants. They were welcomed. Now we have immigrants coming to us from Latino countries and from basically South America and from Mexico, and it's almost like a wall put up. Um, I think the Pope's telling us, and Francis is saying to us, listen, they're your brother and sister. That you know, We have to open our hearts to them, and our, 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 frankly, our homes to them if necessary. So I think the message has to be, these are brothers and sisters. They're here. They're part of our family. What kind of church are we if we turn our back on those in need? Is that the church I want to be a part of? The church I want to be a part of is a church that says, that person has needs, that person has uh, concerns. This church of ours, Catholic Charities, where I work, says, let's try to find a way to welcome them as best we can. To be honest with you, these immigrants today, the vast majority are Catholic. They're coming from, a, a, you know, from, from, from cultures where they were raised Catholic. And they come to our country, and I think they will be part of the church here when they get here. So I think the church, well, well two things. One, it's what we should do. It's, it's basically it's what, what we're called to do, to take care of those who come to our doors. I mean, we shouldn't close our doors when people who come to us who are in need. And secondly, also, they're people of our faith, and, and they grew up in a faith-filled home. Can we help them nurture their faith in our country once they've come to be with us? So um, to me, our bishops, uh, our pastoral letters of immigration, um, our, our own cardinals, 
speaking out about this. It's, we have to do more and more of this. We cannot sit back and allow this um, political debate, you know, blue state, red state debate, Republican, Democrat debate get in the way of, that's a human being who needs our help. You know, when the Pope um, was first elected, and he went, and I'm going to name the place, but he went to the place where they had the, the terrible flooding and all of the accident. And I can't, was, the name was that came out, my mind, but, you know, he said there, he said, I, I have tears for these people. Who's going to cry for these people? And I think that should be our question. Whose heart is moved? Whose tears are flowing? Because they've seen the need and feel a compunction and a challenge to respond. That's who we are as people of God. It's not, this is not like something we do because we're, you know, we're a member of this country. I think we do it because we're people of faith. And the Lord called to be a gospel people who reach out and take care of those in need. Well, first of all, in this diocese where I'm in Washington, D.C., we are at least one-third Latino. At least. So 200,000 Catholics in this community, 600,000 Catholics are Latino. So the message I would have for my brothers and sisters who are not Latino is they're part of our family. The message I have to those who come to us as immigrants and need, deserve our support is we want you to be part of our family. In fact, the gifts you bring, the cultural blessings you have from your own experience growing up, those are things our church needs, our country needs. And thank, thank, thank the Lord you're here. Without you, we would have a lot more struggles than we would imagine. You providing uh, the strength and support, the values, the morals, the principles that we believe in. Together, let's make those principles part of who we are as a people of God.